Thanks, Mel. Did you want to kick it off? You're the top of screen for us. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Joe, um, can you talk us through the changes? Um, obviously, Noah's got a back issue. What's the story with Tom um, and he not playing? And what was Lucan's injury also? Yeah, Lucan got a stinger um, and so had a limited range of movement in his shoulder. Uh, he, 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 he's coming right. He did a lot of the training today. Uh, just not the contact, so um, he, he's moving pretty well. Tom Wright, he, he trained outside the team today, but was moving pretty well. His was an ankle injury. He, he did it in, uh, inside the first 10 minutes of the test match, and so he, he really battled through. Um, didn't pick up too many high-speed metres, was, was, was struggling a little bit, but um, you know, he, he, he fought his way through really well. And, uh, and Noah... When he was replaced, just before he was replaced, really he he got um, he got caught awkwardly and and just he's he's just uncomfortable through really through his shoulder blades quite high um, and um, and it's still stiff through there. Again, he ran okay today, but as uh, you know, he's not doing contact at the moment. And um, if you're playing Argentina and you don't do contact, you, you'll come second. Of course, and um, I guess like James Slipper is going to be a storyline, you know, the opportunity to go level with Greg's. Um, he doesn't like to talk himself up, but um, what have you what have you discovered, I suppose, since becoming Wallaby's coach? What do you make of him as a player and a, a person? Yeah, Slips, he, he doesn't really want to talk at all. Um, certainly not about himself. Uh, you know, he's really humble um, and just gets on with the job. He, he's massively invested in the Wallabies, um, and his his efforts, no matter uh, where you are or, or what the requirement is, he's just really keen to do what's best for the team, and I I, I think that that uh, kind of stands stands out when whenever I have conversations with him, and and he's obviously one of the leaders uh, in the group, so I have conversations with him quite often. Um, he spoke to the boys before uh, the test match last weekend and, and spoke really well. And because he doesn't speak often, I, th I think the, the words resonate just a little bit more. Um, he's, he's obviously a proud dad um, twice over now and, and that was, a, that was a, a commitment that he had in the early part of last week, so, so he wasn't involved. But um, yeah, it's great to have him back in the mix this week and, and that that big number is is, is looking, uh, you know, pretty promising. Hey Joe, um, the the fact that you've had to kind of shuffle your ten around, does it come at the right time? Is it an awkward time because Noah just started to build a bit of that continuity, started to take the game on a bit? Like, is it is it frustrating to lose him now? Um, not, not really, because we're, we're still trying to build our way forward. And I think it's just, you know, it's a great opportunity for Ben Donaldson. Um, he was the incumbent, really, from the World Cup. And it's a great opportunity for Tom Liner after having a, a hamstring niggle that he, he was struggling to get rid of. He's now 100%. And so those two, they're, they're excited to take on the mantle. Um, and Noah, while he's disappointed, if you'd seen him at, at training and before training, they're, they're discussing, you know, the, the the strategy around the the game for us. He, he's absolutely bought into being uh, a squad member and, and trying to help the others prepare. And consistency has been something that's played Australian rugby for quite a while now. What have you found the most difficult thing around getting a young Wallabies group going? And has, have you noticed anything between weeks around their preparation? Or are you confident that they'll be able to maintain the heights of last week and go more? Yeah, you know, there are parts of last week that, that weren't really great heights for us. You know, kickoff reception, high ball reception, um, high ball on the chase. And, and, uh, and, you know, we still know that there are elements of our game that need to be better, but there were some elements I, I thought were, were really impressive. Um, I, I really like the way we built to that second try. There's a number of aspects of how I would like to play involved in that with a lot of movement off the ball, onto the ball, um, accuracy of passing. 
um, speed of the ball, it, it that came together. Now I'm sure I know Felipe Contepomi very well, Kenny Lynn. They'll be making sure that their their uh, Pumas. Um, try to get in the way of that. They've got some guys who slow the ball, attack the ball on the ground really, really strongly, obviously with Montoya. Massive day for him, having his uh, 100th test match for Los Pumas. So um, they'll be massively motivated. And um, Matira over the ball, Gonzalez is such a good athlete. Um, and, and even guys like Sklavi uh, I've seen get over the ball and he's very hard to shift once he is over it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that our continuity in game, in play, is going to be really important and um, it's, and it's going to be challenging. The, the conditions are going to be very different. Four o'clock kickoff, it'll be light throughout the fixture and, um, and it'll be hot, um, predicted high of about 28 degrees. Um, it was about eight degrees last Saturday. Uh, seriously speaking, it was, and and it was probably felt colder than that because of the wind and rain. So, um, yeah, twenty degree swing, and 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 hopefully the result doesn't swing. Hey Joe, um, I'm sure you've probably seen the reports coming out of South Africa about. Um, the Springboks apparently asking World Rugby to look into the Wallabies injuries from that Perth match. Are you able to, um, I guess, just explain um, those series of injuries um, and, and, and what happened with uh, use of the bench in that, in that match and just a general response to that? I know Alan obviously spoke yesterday, um, you know, adamant that clearly the team wants to scrum and, and not showing away from that. Yeah, I think that was pretty evident against Los Pumas. I thought the scrum was one of our strong points in the game and, and, uh, and it gave us a couple of access points that were, that were sorely needed in the game. Um, Angus Bell came off both for blood and an injury. Um, and so once you have substituted a player for injury, they cannot return to the field of play. You can substitute them and a front row player can return to the field of play or any player can return for blood or a head injury. And then um, we had two head injuries that were assessed by an independent medical doctor um, who I'm sure would, would, wouldn't appreciate uh, anyone questioning their independence um, because for us, in the end, I, I think in the game we conceded three mall tries. Uh, we didn't have our big men to, to combat those malls. So it, it's not like anything that we wanted to have happen, uh, but player welfare is, is paramount. And when players are injured, um, particularly those two head injuries we got in the second half, it's really important that, that, the, that the protocols for head injury assessments are followed. They both um, failed their HIA2 and their HIA3 as well. So um, I, I, as far as I know, there has been no formal inquiry made to World Rugby. Certainly nothing that World Rugby have come back to us with and, and, um, and, and nothing that they have said that they, they felt was untoward. Yeah, so you haven't been asked to provide um, medical records or anything by, by World Rugby or anyone else? No. That were, as I said, World Rugby, as far as we know, ha haven't had a formal uh, request to investigate anything that happened. So um, they, they haven't certainly come to us and uh, they haven't questioned I anything that happened um, because, like us, they, 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 they know the regulations and they're driven to, to make sure that player welfare is, is paramount. <laughs> Joe, that a Springbok and a former Springbok captain who's played a lot is questioning uh, a rival nation like what they did by saying that tactically it was a decision that the Wallabies would. But it, it, it's dangerous territory, isn't it? Well, it, it, it's someone's prerogative if if that's if that's what they believe. Um, we we all question things um, from from afar at times if. And particularly when we're not abreast of, of the valid information, um, but the, the the information is is black and white. Um, there was a clear injury in the first half uh, to Angus Bell. Um, he, he was removed at half time, and um, 
the, yeah, the, the two head injuries in the second half. It's in coaching over a hundred test matches that I've never had that happen before. It's not like it happens very often, but um, we were certainly disadvantaged by it because we didn't get the opportunity to have our big men um, combating them all. And there were three more tries in the in the second half, and it, in the end that that caused the scoreboard separation that, that existed at the end of the game. Joe, so while, um, while on current topics, um, new week of competition uh, to replace uh, the rugby championship, perhaps um, with a tour between the Springboks and the All Blacks. Um, I just wonder what your thoughts are on that and it may be superseding the rugby championship, whether there's fears that you know, in a way, we're becoming like a second-class nation in terms of that group of group of four, and whether you think it's a good thing and what Australia might look to explore to to do in response. Yeah, it's a tough question, Tony, because it's uh, it's a it, it's a real mix world rugby at the moment with the different competitions and agreements that that exist. Um, Six Nations is such a solidified competition that the Northern Hemisphere have a very exclusive club there. Um, and I know talking to the Georgian coaches, they'd love to, they'd love to have a crack at getting into, into that competition. At the same time, um, it, it's not going to replace the Rugby Championship. The Rugby Championship, it, it, as far as I know, is going to continue, um, but, it, but it will be truncated in that year. There's also... Um, uh, a, a fair bit of planning and preparation around a Nations Cup that is, that is I, I think, potentially a fantastic um, competition that, that may be biannual and, and it, it may be that um, the, the, the teams from the Southern Hemisphere accumulate points versus the Northern Hemisphere accumulate points and you get crossovers and, and, um, and you end up with a, a championship during the November series. So that's, that's another uh, potential outcome that, that could really, uh, I think, energise interest in the game. But uh, do, do you feel it's a sign that the rugby championship, in some sense, needs fixing, that it's not quite right? Or do you feel, as a competition, as it stands this season, that it, that it works and it, that it's worth, worth fighting and persisting with? Um, well, we had great crowds for two games, you know, um, I, I think a total of about 110,000 people came to two games in Australia. It, w it was sold out in La Plata. I, I, I'm not sure everyone took their seat because um, I, I haven't played or I haven't seen games played in storms like that very often. But, um, you know, they're expecting a, a bumper crowd here in Santa Fe as well on Saturday. So I... I think local interest is still really high, and so you would expect that 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 in itself is evidence that the the competition still holds some sway with with rugby rugby fans. Just one more while while I'm here, um, Josh Cannon wasn't in I think your first squad of the season, and it surprised a few people. Um, can you describe? what he was sent away perhaps to work on, what you've seen since then and why, you know, why he's received a call-up now. Yeah, again, um, Josh is, is uh, he's a good athlete and, and I, I think he's a really promising young player. Um, he he's, has gone away and, and put some work in um, and, and some of that is just the, just the physical grind of, of trying to make sure that he's, He's prepared for Test Match Rugby. I think you've got to get the balance right in, in having people ready for Test Match Rugby. If you put them in and they're not physically prepared for it, then I, I think to a degree you set them, you set them up to fail and, and you set the team up to, to be a little bit vulnerable. So um, he's built a bit of confidence um, through that work he's done and, and we've built a bit of confidence in, in what Josh can deliver. He's a skillful young man, he's, he's a competitor and, and we're looking forward to, to seeing how he, how he copes in a, in a fairly hostile environment on Saturday. 
Can I just ask one quickly, Joe, about Max Jorgensen, obviously um, getting a start this week, young man. Um, some say he's kind of got an old head on young shoulders. What have you made of him and gave you the confidence to give him a start here? Yeah, he's, Max has built his way in. Um, he said a couple of runs off the bench, which is which is ideal for him to, to gain a bit of confidence um, and for us to know a little bit more about him. I think when um, when he picked that ball up in space uh, from the cross kick from Tom Wright and accelerated, you know, it's not very often that Mapimpe is is uh, is left grasping, and and that's the acceleration and, and footwork that he's got. Um, you know, he didn't quite hold on to a ball that was promising from Noah in the weekend up the right hand touch, but um, got some great pressure on the kicker, which allowed us to have a line out on or around the 22, which is where we launched the last attack from that, that ultimately gave us the, the opportunity to win the game. So Max, uh, he's working really well off the ball, which um, was was part of what we wanted him to work on. Because um, once he's on the ball, he's um, yeah he's, he's an exciting young um, rugby player. Last couple, please, guys. Uh, Joe, just in terms of momentum, uh, all Blacks to follow. You know, how how significant a win victory is leading into a, a Bledisloe series? Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure really. It, it's a very they're a very different opposition, and and um, and it will it will be a different week uh, of preparation for them. Um, uh, to be brutally honest, we, we're just trying to to stack enough positives week to week, um, but. You know, any progress is never linear, and you'll tend to go up and down in different facets of the game. But, but we're, we're never confident. But, but we see uh, some elements of growth in the in the team, and um, through the, the the test matches that we've played so far, the the six matches. Um, you know, if you'd said a few months ago you'll have four wins, um, then, then you know I think that. That's a little bit of momentum in itself, and and we'll just keep trying to to stack good elements of performance together, and hopefully that's enough to get us the result at the end of the day. Um, and, and we'll take a result in the last minute by one point any any time that's on offer. Um, it just I'm not sure my heart will um, sustain those, but but certainly um, it, it was a real fillip for us last week to get the result. I might have one more if, if we have time. Um, Len's coming up next, um, Joe. So his his match last week, I mean, a lot of people had him as the man of the match in that one. And I wonder if you'd seen him play better, what you make of what he's doing currently for you and, and just an overall impression of his, his play in your time here. Yeah, I, th- I thought Len was super. Obviously, he, he had a... A clear hand in both the tries. Um, there's no look past to, to Tom Wright um, when he fixed the, the the defenders, drew the defenders to him, um, gave gave Tom um, an opportunity, and then again he made the line break, got the offload to Marika Corombetti, and and that was really the the momentum leading up to the second try. So you know it, it wasn't just then. He, he gave us some good uh, advantage line carries. His footwork was really strong and um, he, he connected really well defensively. He, he's just starting to talk a little bit, Len. He's, he's, he's pretty quiet and understated character. He's a humble man and he just gets out there and plays and, and we're trying to grow a little bit because he, he, he's got a little bit of experience. You know, he's in there with a a guy, Hamish Stewart, who was having his debut, and we're trying to get him to, to talk a bit with Hamish. They get on really well, but uh, neither of them are really big talkers. They're just doers, and um, you know it would be good if they shared what they're doing with each other sometimes um, and with others in the team. So that that's probably a work on for Len, but, but his contribution was... It was a bit of a game changer for us, and, and if there was to be a man of the match, uh, I've no doubt that he would have been in the very short shortlist.